We got a 9560RT scraper special here. We got a pair of 2112E scrapers on the back. Just gonna run through the auto load setup real quick. Kind of talk about the uh, I guess the fuel efficiency uh, mode, or a lot of guys refer to it as kind of a cruise control. Um, so here we got our our home screen. When you hook your scraper cans up, if you have the engine shut off, plug in the uh, auto load harness into the back of the tractor and in the back of the other scraper there. You start the engine, this will automatically come up on the home screen. It shows we've got two scrapers connected. So to set our, our auto load depth, our dump, our fill depth, and our uh, ride height, we just go in here and select that. It'll take us to our setup screen. And then uh, Come over here on the side, we've got our front can and our number two, which is our back scraper can. Select that one, it'll highlight our front scraper can settings here. And this little yellow arrow here is our cutting edge. If I raise the scraper up, that arrow will move. Now right there we're in the, the uh, highest up position. These cans have accumulators on them, so we want to ride height, we want them down an inch or so, so that cylinder's got room to float. So we just put that wherever we want to put it. Somehow unhighlighted that, but anyway. Now we've got our box highlighted in red again. Say that's where I'm going to set my ride height. Come over to this key with the arrow and a line pointing up. I select that and that'll set my ride height. So I want to set my fill height. I can set it, look back at my cutting edge. It's kind of hard to see on this front can, but I can look back at that and say, okay, I'm, my center bit's six inches off the ground. So that'll show my arrow there my cutting edge there on the screen, I can hit this key, and it'll set my fill height, which represents this gray bar right here at the bottom of the arrow. If I want to set it down a little further, I can hit it again, the gray bar gets bigger. If I want to move it up to where I'm dumping deeper, there's that. And then when we're setting our auto load cut depth, we want to put our edge on the ground and push it down just a little bit. So we got our center bit kind of smashed on the ground a little bit. And then there, we can hit this next one, arrow down, that'll set our auto load cut height. So now we got the front can all set up. We'll hit the second can here, and that'll be a little easier for me to show you what the can's doing as we're adjusting things, because you can actually see the edge on it back there. So there, we're up all the way. Put it down just a little bit, so the cylinder's got room to float. We hit this top arrow, got a right height set. Say I want to fill four or five inches, I just look at it and say, okay, that's about how much I want to dump out. I hit this arrow, set my fill height, then we'll put the cutting edge down and put a little bit of down pressure on it. And then we'll set our cut depth. So now that I've got that set, go back to my home screen here. 
and we'll use the back cam because I, it's easier to see what it's doing. But if I take my third remote, which is my back scraper lift and lower switch, and I lock that into detent, it'll come up and stop at the right height. So I'm running down the haul road, I get to my fill, I want to set it to dump my load, hit the detent, it'll drop to that fill height where we're just a few inches off the ground there and then you can cycle your ejector. You don't even have to turn around and look back see what's going on back there. You can just watch what you've got here. You know where your cutting edges are at. How deep you're filling. After we get dumped, cycle our apron injector back shut. And then once we get back to our cut again, it probably won't do it because I'm sitting still without any throttle, but we just hit our D10 again. Yeah, didn't do that to me. Hit our D10 again while we're moving at full throttle, and it'll drop this down and start making the cut. Click them into detent all the way up. Get them again. They'll both drop to my fill height. Cycle the apron ejector, dump the load out. Bring them back up to transport height again. When we're pulling into the cut, we can run them down to that height and then. We'll drop our front one in, it'll go to the cut depth, make our cut, cycle our apron shut, run the, that pan all the way up, drop our second one in, and while the auto load is on, the machine will actually adjust that can up and down depending on the engine load, uh, the stress on the draw bar. It, measures all kinds of parameters to adjust that can up and down. It basically just runs the scraper for you. Um, operators that have spent some time on them don't really need it. It's an awesome tool for new operators because you can't see what that back can's doing most of the time. Um, It just makes it a lot easier for the training process. Um, here we've got a load counter. If you turn that on, I'm to remember how the hell to turn on. Yeah, there's a setting in there somewhere, but anyway. These bars here adjust the aggressiveness of your cut. When you're starting your cut, it'll, it'll adjust how fast and hard your cutting edge dives in the ground when you set it down. Um, this is an average draft. Uh, there's your front can and back can. You can fine tune them and adjust them at how much how much your edge is diving in the ground on you when you're getting it cut started. Um, also on a load counter you can come up just run in this screen which is your scraper menu. You got a plus or a minus button here in the corner. This is how I like to run it. I just put it on there and then every time I get a load, I just hit the plus arrow, tally another load on the count. Um, I find load counts to be a lot more accurate when you've got it here in the screen than trying to remember to click a bell counter over here, hang on a shifter or up there somewhere out of sight. Um, kind of gone through the auto load menu there kind of run around the yard here and do a little demonstration on the uh, auto shift <clears throat> fuel efficiency mode. And, uh, we actually had a guy from the scraper factory here last week showing us all this stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool technology they put in these tractors but uh, basically to set up your auto shift we want our cruise control basically we put our shifter in neutral and over here we've got two preset speeds and the way this fuel efficiency efficiency uh, 
management system works is uh, say we want to select our forward one setting now up here on the column pillar see if we've got a speed there that's our set speed and I can take this wheel on the shifter and roll it forward or back and it'll adjust that speed up or down so just for demonstration purposes, like the get factory guy showed us, I'm going to set this thing for five miles an hour. So we got it set. We'll select one again, shut that off. And then every time we hit this switch, turn on the automatic mode, it'll be set to five miles an hour. So we'll go ahead and just kind of cruise around here and look at the fuel consumption. So we're only burning seven and a half gallon an hour. Eight. I'll turn it around, get head back uphill, and then I'll shift into that efficiency manager. And we'll see a drop in that fuel consumption. Right now we're basically full throttle, five mile an hour, six gear. almost 10 gallon an hour. I'll hit this, it'll automatically start up shifting. Our engine RPMs will come down. 1630. Since we're still going uphill, we're not seeing a huge difference in fuel, but we dropped up a couple gallon an hour there, down to about seven. And they say that this, uh, this fuel efficiency system, we've seen savings of up to 30% in fuel consumption over the course of a day. And now that's our F1 setting, and I've already got the, the second F2 setting set. We just hit that. RPM and gear to run at that speed, and it's going to shift there at the most efficient way possible. Also, to say I'm just I want to adjust my speed on my haul road, I just roll that wheel forward and go faster. It'll automatically shift up. That's one of the features I think I like the best about it. You can set that cruise control, run down your haul road, and say you're coming into a curve, you can just roll this dial back, drop your travel speed down, and when you get out of your curve, you can roll it back up, and it'll automatically go to that speed you, you got set on your wheel without having to mess with the throttle uh, or the shifter. Else, you know, you're maximizing fuel efficiency and you're uh, down your haul road. Uh, for this cruise control to work, the throttle's got to be wide open if you back it off. Uh, if you're not full throttle and try to turn it on, it won't turn on. And 
until you bring it all the way up full throttle, shut it off, turn it back on again. Um, you're pulling into your cut, you can either hit your switch again to shut off the mode you're in, or you can cut your throttle back about halfway and start downshifting into the gear you want to be in your cut at. Um, if you don't pull the throttle back and you start downshifting and shut off that fuel efficiency mode, your engine's going to run wide open and the tractor's probably going to try and take off on you. So it's best to roll that throttle back and then start downshifting. That way the, uh, the scraper doesn't get away from you. There's the menu. This monitor will control basically everything in this cab and some more stuff. Um, do remote software updates, uh, implement automation, air conditioner controls. We can adjust our oil flow and time settings on our SVCs. Uh, SCVs, sorry. We can turn on different lights. Customized transmission settings. Here we got iTech. That's basically got to do with the auto load, I believe. Engine. We can adjust stuff here too for engine parameters and settings. Control the radio. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth to this tractor, make phone calls to the stereo system. It's basically got hands-free in it. Um, I think that's part of the diagnostics screen. It gives us some, some more engine parameters, uh, tractor performance info, Green Star video, I believe. They can put, uh, that's probably for the mirrors, I would imagine. Somehow, not sure how that works, but. Access manager, you can go in here and basically put a uh, password in and lock your operators out of specific settings in the tractor. Layout manager, you can change how your home screen looks. Display, we can change brightness. Beeper sounds, languages, all that stuff. You got the original Green Star monitor for the old, from the older model tractors. Uh, probably a little more familiar to the guys running the older stuff that are used to seeing this instead of this new monitor. So, yeah, that's basically just a quick overview of the auto load and fuel efficiency manager. There's a lot of a lot of technological advances in this new tractors. Um, some pretty neat stuff in here. Increased production and efficiency. Yeah.